Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christie Reisinger, and today we're going to take a deeper dive into the Johnson Johnson vaccine and why this vaccine has been put on hold for now. On Tuesday, April 13th, the United States Federal Health Agencies made a statement recommending that Johnson & Johnson vaccine be put on hold to further investigate a possible association with a vaccine in a rare and unusual type of blood clotting with low platelets. They mentioned that there had been six reported cases of these blood clots in the United States after the Johnson & Johnson vaccine had been given. All six of the initial cases were white women between the ages of 18 and 48, and all developed the issue within one to two weeks of vaccination. One woman in Virginia died, and a second woman in Nebraska has been hospitalized and is in critical condition. There were also murmurings of a few more cases with a possible connection to the Johnson & Johnson vaccine that are currently under review by the CDC. About 7.6 million people in the United States have received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine so far, and another 10 million doses have been shipped out to the states, according to data from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. So while serious, this side effect is very rare. But as I continue to mention, we do have a higher standard to meet with vaccine safety because unlike medications that are given to patients that are sick, vaccines are given to patients that are healthy. So any side effect needs to be looked at very closely. While blood clots in general are very common and affect as many as 900,000 people per year in the United States, the type of blood clots that have been seen in these patients after the Johnson & Johnson vaccine are very different in several ways. The first is the location. These clots have been seen in the cerebral venous sinuses and are called cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, or CVST. The moment I heard about this location in the brain, I knew this was something very odd. Most thrombotic or ischemic strokes occur in the arterial system of the brain, not the venous system. The next difference is that these strokes are also occurring in conjunction with a low platelet level, something called thrombocytopenia. And when you have low platelets, you're at great risk for bleeding. But when the platelets get very low, paradoxically, there's an increased risk for clotting as well. And as you can imagine, it's so difficult to manage a patient that has an increased risk of bleeding, but also has clotting that's occurring. But another peculiar aspect to these patients is that these patients also have developed an antibody against something called platelet factor four. Platelet factor four is a protein that's found inside platelets. This antibody is usually only seen after patients have received an IV medication called heparin in the hospital. This is a common medication used to prevent clotting. And in some people, when these antibodies are produced, it causes terrible consequences. The antibody activates platelets, causing some to clot and others to be destroyed. These antibodies also damage the cells lining the blood vessels, which also increases risk for clots. But what's interesting is that the patients that are developing these clots have never received any heparin. And yet they have these antibodies, which causes the low platelet counts and clotting that we see. Scientists think something in the Johnson & Johnson vaccine causes this antibody to platelet factor four to form. Physicians and scientists propose calling this very rare blood clotting condition vaccine-induced immune thrombotic thrombocytopenia, or VIT. This rare clotting also has a possible connection with the AstraZeneca vaccine. I discussed this in my last video in more detail. And something that both vaccines have in common is that they both use an adenovirus or a common cold virus to carry the vaccine information into the cells. The AstraZeneca vaccine uses a chimpanzee adenovirus, while the Johnson & Johnson vaccine uses recombinant adenovirus 26. Furthermore, the Russian vaccine called Sputnik V and the Chinese vaccine from CanSino Biologics also uses the adenovirus technology in their vaccines. Scientists are not sure if it's the adenovirus technology that's causing the problem, but this type of clotting has not been seen with the mRNA vaccines from Pfizer and Moderna. 
The CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices is scheduled to meet again on April 23rd, and they'll provide a recommendation about the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The recommendation will likely include one of three decisions. To either stop use of the J&J vaccine completely, to continue using the J&J vaccine without any restrictions, or somewhere in the middle, like what we've seen with the AstraZeneca vaccine, where the vaccine would be recommended for a certain age group only, or there would be certain restrictions or a warning label with the vaccine. I think the CDC will likely choose the last recommendation to continue the vaccine, but with some parameters around it. But what will likely add to the confusion and concerns surrounding this vaccine is that different countries will likely decide to do different things with this vaccine. As I mentioned, as of now, the U.S. has put the J&J &J vaccination on hold while it's under review. However, Poland has proceeded with their J&J &J vaccination distribution. Belgium has delayed the distribution of the vaccine, while South Africa has suspended the use of the vaccine on April 13th. So at the end of the day, would I personally take the Johnson & Johnson vaccine if it were to come back on the market and be approved by the CDC for distribution once again? I would. Let me tell you why. Even though the side effect and consequence of the vaccine is terrible, it's extremely rare. So far, we know of six out of over 7 million vaccines that have been given. Even if that number were to double or even triple, it still would be very, very rare. I know the thought of receiving a vaccine and having a terrible side effect is scary, but there are also very healthy people that have died from COVID-19 as well. So I personally believe the benefit of the vaccine outweighs the risk of this very rare side effect. We'll have to wait and see what guidelines the CDC gives at the end of this week. Thanks for joining me.